This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. T.W. Tabidi, The Life of a South African Revolutionary Syndicalist by Lucien Vandervolt. The son of a Wesleyan minister, Tabidi William Tabidi, was one of the most important black African revolutionary syndicalists in South African history. Tabidi was a leading figure in the International Socialist League, ISL, and in the Industrial Workers of Africa Syndicalist Union. Later, he played an important role in the early Communist Party of South Africa, CPSA, particularly its union work. He was active in all of the key black unions from the 1910s to the 1940s. According to Eddie Rue of the CPSA, Tabidi was a genius at getting people together, whether workers in a particular industry, women, location residents, or whatever was needed at the moment. The ISL. Hailing from the small town of Vereniging, T.W. Tabidi trained as a school teacher and worked at a church school in Johannesburg. Around 1916, he joined the ISL as its first major African leader. In September 1917, Tibidi was involved in organizing an ISL-sponsored conference that led to the formation of a Solidarity Committee intended to reform the Orthodox trade unions in syndicalist lines. These existing unions generally excluded people of color, except in Cape Town, tended to craft unionism, and were prone to binding no-strike agreements. Tabidi served on the committee, which was not, however, a success. Union Militant From 1918, Tabidi was involved in the Industrial Workers of Africa's Johannesburg section, arguing for one big union united on class lines across the races and mass action. This union was an ISL initiative and had well over a thousand members countrywide. The first Industrial Workers of Africa leaflet, written by committee and issued in Isi Zulu and Sesotho, proclaimed, Workers of the Bantu race, why do you live in slavery? Why are you not free as other men are free? Why are you kicked and spat upon by your masters? Why must you carry a pass before you can move anywhere? And if you are found without one, why are you thrown into prison? Why do you toil hard for a little money, and again thrown into prison if you refuse to work? Why do they herd you like cattle into compounds? Why? Because you are the toilers of the earth. Because the masters want you to labor for their profit. Because they pay the government and police to keep you as slaves to toil for them. There is only one way of deliverance for you Bantu workers. Unite as workers. Unite. Forget the things which divide you. The sun has arisen, the day is breaking. For a long time you were asleep while the mill of the rich man was grinding and breaking the sweat of your work for nothing. The ISL advocated struggle against the pass and indenture laws and against the compound system through mass action centered on the one big union. The Industrial Workers of Africa was just one of the several syndicalist unions it formed and, and led. Inside the ANC, along with other industrial workers of Africa militants, Tibidi promoted syndicalism as part of the syndicalist current in the left wing of the late 1910s South African Native National Congress, SANNC, now the African National Congress, or ANC. When a failed joint general strike in July 1918 led to a crackdown on the ISL, the Industrial Workers of Africa and the SANNC left wing in the Transvaal, it fell to Tabidi to revive the Union in Johannesburg. A leaflet by Tabidi in 1919 argued, Black African, open your eyes. The time has come for you all who call themselves country workers, that you should join and become members of your own council. It is not to say that we workers stop you from joining any other councils, but you must know what you are in the country for, rich or poor. All workers are poor, therefore they should have their own council. Why are you afraid to become members of the Industrial Workers of Africa whilst you call yourselves workers? 
The union in Johannesburg drew its members from across the African working class and was actually more of a general union than the industrial union on IWW lines to which it aspired. Its Cape Town section, by contrast, was mainly based on the docks. The CPSA and after. The key African in the early CPSA, Tibidi put his syndicalist background to work when he ran the party's night school in Johannesburg. He became a full-time CPSA organizer and unionist. He worked inside the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, and when the ICU broke with the CPSA and the CPSA set of red unions, he led the CPSA's Federation of Non-European Trade Unions, FNETU. The CPSA was racked with purges at the time and expelled Tabidi in 1929. He rejected the two-stage approach, which still remains Communist Party policy and is the basis of the alliance with the ANC. However, FNETU rebelled and forced Tibidi's reinstatement. He was finally expelled in 1931. Later, Tibidi flirted with Trotskyism, especially the Workers' International League. This ran an opposition caucus in the CPSA-led Council of Euro Non-European Trade Unions, CNETU, in the 1940s. Legacy Tibidi repeatedly rejected requests to rejoin the CPSA and, tired of militant work, faded from public life from the late 1940s. Living in Ersteris, he died in 1960. Ersteris was a freehold township in Pretoria from which Africans were evicted from in 1959, a bitter experience for the aged man. Tibidi's years of union and left activism spanning syndicalism, communism, and Trotskyism, and his absolutely pivotal role in this period have not received their due recognition. However, in 2006, the Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU, with close party links, resolved to memorialize him and other worker heroes. The status of his monument is unclear. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.